Welcome, Internet. I'm Thomas Holman, a.k.a. Mr. Warburg, and this is the Mr. Warburg Show, episode number five. Moved the show over to the Farm Nerds channel, mostly because I think it fits in better with what I'm trying to do with that specific channel, rather than where my personal channel where I don't do too much of anything anymore. Today's topic, though, we've already done cartoons, we've done Star Wars, done a few other things. Now, we're going to do the Marvel movies, mostly because I went and saw Ant-Man for the third time last night. Now, of course, this list is really hard, because it's trying to, like, it's... I'm trying to pick this list is pretty hard, because it's trying... It's like... Jeez, can't talk. Now, I'm trying to rank the Marvel movies from worst to first, which is pretty hard. It's kind of like trying to pick the worst dog to own, because they're all good, because they're dogs. And it's like any... I'm trying to pick the worst Marvel movie is like trying to find a bad dog to own. It's kind of impossible, if not totally impossible. Because they're all pretty good, even if some of them aren't as good as others. With that in mind, we'll start with number 12 on the list, and that is Thor 2 The Dark World. Mostly because it was more of a generic sequel slash filler set up for stuff further down the road than telling a good self-contained story. Uh, like they were trying to do stuff to tie it into like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and things like that, and they were too focused on other things rather than their own movie. Similar problems also kind of afflicted the next two films on my list, which are the first Thor and Iron Man 2. Now, Iron Man 2, uh, specifically, since it'll be uh, number 10 on the list, um, is better in hindsight after you see Avengers, because it was definitely like the setup movie for Avengers. And in that, it did a good job, but that doesn't mean it's on its own a standalone good movie. Again, if you watch it as like part one of the Avengers, really good movie, like a really good first half of a movie, I guess I should say. Uh, the next movie, number nine, would be The Incredible Hulk. Really liked what they did with uh, Bruce Banner and his relationship to like other people, having him being on the run, and actually telling it well versus like Ang, Lee, Ang Lee's Hulk, which really sucked. It was terrible. Uh, sadly, Norton was kind of a dick, apparently, from stories, so we didn't get him in The Avengers, but thankfully we got Mark Ruffalo, and I'm cool with that. Next movie, mostly because it was just, you know, pretty good, would be Captain America, the, uh, the first Avenger. That was the name of it, right? Yeah, totally was. Uh, you know, really good cast. Tommy Lee Jones, Haley Atwell, uh, Chris Evans is awesome as Captain America. Uh, man, I'm blanking on uh, Sebastian Shaw. That's his name. Or Stan? Sebastian Stan? I don't, I'll, I'll look it up later. Uh, the guy who ended up playing Bucky Barnes. Their relationships were all good. Uh, it just didn't really, like, grab me from, like, the stakes perspective. Like, it didn't really feel like it was all that, like, important because it was a prequel and we knew what would be coming in Avengers. Uh, but still, really fun movie. And going back, still a ton, ton of fun to watch. Uh, next movie, something that uh, probably my favorite in terms of its like attempt, or, like our ambition, would be Iron Man three. Like they tell some really cool story beats with Tony Stark, like they do post traumatic stress and like uh, spend a lot more time outside the Iron Man suit because Tony Stark like is Iron Man, but that's not the crux of his character. And I really like where they went, and I I like the Mandarin twist because especially in one of the uh, Blu-ray shorts, like. The real Mandarin is still out there, which is pretty cool. Next on the list, Avengers 2, Age of Ultron, or uh, the Avengers Age of Ultron, no 2. Kind of weird how Marvel, they just don't put the numbers on things, which I'm cool with, but gets confusing when making lists like this. Uh, just count, felt kind of like a retread of the first Avengers, uh, in that it like didn't, didn't have the exact same magic because it had already happened once before. You know, like it didn't, it didn't spark anything really crazy. Like, the first Avengers did. Like, that one went absolutely ham at the box office because nothing like that had been done before. Avengers 2 is, like, more of the same thing, which is good, but didn't really push anything really forward comparatively to the Avengers. Uh, number... Five. Right? Yeah. Ant-Man. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as good of maybe even a movie as Age of Ultron, but it was more fun. Uh, it, you had a better time in the movies. It didn't feel so dour. It wasn't as long, for starters, and it made more chronological sense. It kept the momentum going. Everything worked better in the film. Uh, even though I liked the story in Age of Ultron a little bit better, and it was a little more true to the comics, too, because Scott Lang is definitely not the character that Paul Rudd portrayed, but that's a whole other thing entirely. Uh, moving on to the one above that, number four, that'd be the first Iron Man, which is an amazing performance from Robert Downey Jr. Really, like, kicks off this whole moment of, man, they're really doing the freaking Avengers, which is going to be fantastic. I still remember walking out of the theater right after Samuel Jackson shows up at the end of the credits. Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger initiative. It was awesome. 
Uh, villain, of course, quite cliched, really, really weak. All of these are except for, I want to say, Thor 2, kind of, because Loki still like ends up twisting at the end. And the first, the first Thor, obviously, had the best villain because it was Loki. Uh, then the next one above, that would be the Avengers itself. Uh, that would be number three on the list. Like I said, a lot of fun. Not the best story because there's some just weird momentum issues and things like that. Uh, but still a ton of fun at the movie theater. The two above it, though, I think are the best movies Marvel has to date made. Probably up there with the best Disney's maybe made, too, since they're all Disney properties as well. That would be Guardians of the Galaxy, mostly because it's Star Wars meets Marvel, and what's not to love about that? And the first one would be like a mashup of 70s spy thrillers and superhero movies, and that would be Captain America the Winter Soldier. She had Robert Redford playing like one of the main bad guys who you don't know is the main bad guy until halfway through. That was a really good like spy thriller twist. And it was just an all-around awesome time at the movies because it was so different from what had come before and really pushed that Captain America side of the universe forward in huge ways and had massive ramifications for the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, including like the TV show, future movies, like and they even had like the setup scenes uh, for like uh, Ant-Man, the beginning with the Triskelion being built and everything. It created a lot of new things for the Marvel Universe, which is why it's one of my favorite. Not to mention the acting's amazing, the story's awesome. It's such a great, like, story that they pulled from Ed... I want to say it's Ed Brubaker, I think that's how you say his name, uh, with the Winter Soldier story, uh, and I'm really looking forward to what they do with Civil War. But that's just my list. Uh, so let me know how shitty it was in the comments below. If you have any other comments or questions or scaling and diamonds, let me know down there too, but only after you like and subscribe. See ya. Chicks with dicks, Johnny? Yeah. Chicks with dicks? I need oh, help. I have, I have a disease. There are no chicks with dicks, Johnny. There are only, only guys with, with tits. tits.